Today I'm going to be taking a look at the recently released Linux Mint 22 codenamed Wilma. And now Linux Mint is based on Ubuntu. This version of Linux Mint is going to be based on the last Ubuntu LTS, which is Ubuntu 24.04. Linux Mint is one of the more popular desktop Linux distributions, so every time they have a new major release, I like to take a look at their flagship edition, which uses the Cinnamon desktop environment. So I installed Linux Mint 22 inside a virtual machine. I'm not going to show the installation process because it's the same old Linux Mint installer. It uses the old Ubuntu Ubiquity installer where you click OK three or four times and in about 10 minutes you're done. In the installer you do have the options to install all your multimedia codecs uh, similar to how Ubuntu does it. It also had the option of also encrypting your home directory if you want to do that. It also had the option of using LVM. If you wanted to do that, but it's the same ubiquity installer that Ubuntu used for so many years, although Ubuntu now has moved to a new installer. Of course, they're using their new Flutter based installer now on Ubuntu. I don't know if Linux Mint will eventually move to that installer or keep the old ubiquity installer in the future or not, but either one of them, they're both good installation programs. They're very easy. They're very new user friendly. After installation, when you first log into the Cinnamon desktop environment, you get your welcome application, which which is a really fantastic welcome application because it really gives you a lot of good information, a lot of good documentation. It gives you this first steps tab here, where if you want to go ahead and customize some of the desktop colors, you can go ahead and do that. So let's go ahead and play with some of the theming because this is typically something I wouldn't do, but I'm going to go ahead and click launch. It took a second for that to actually launch that window, but by default, the appearance is set to mixed. Uh, so I guess it has some combination of light and dark themes. Maybe it's doing like a dark panel, but a light GTK theme for the windows, which appears to be how that's happening here. You can see that the actual menu system and all is dark, but these windows are light. For me, I prefer all dark. So I'm going to switch to all dark. For accent colors, they are using blue and orange by default. Uh, maybe since it is Linux Mint, let's do some green for some accent colors. And let me go ahead and close that out. We have system snapshots here. So this is going to be your time shift uh, backup plan here. So if I wanted to go ahead and set up snapshots here, you can see select snapshot type rsync or butterfs. Butterfs is not able to be selected because by default Linux Mint uses the extend4 file system. So rsync is how it's going to handle these uh, snapshots here. So let me go ahead and click next. And I may or may not set this up uh, here on camera. It's very easy to set these up, but I don't want to waste too much time in this virtual machine because I'm never really going to need these backups on this virtual machine. But you would click next a few times. You would set how often you want these snapshots to be taken. Do you want them on a daily basis, on a weekly basis? How many of these snapshots should you keep? Because obviously they take up a lot of space on your file system. So after so many uh, snapshots are taken, it'll start deleting some of them so you don't fill up your drive. But anyway, I've done uh, a little bit of uh, time shift on camera before showing you guys how to use time shift if you're new to it. You do have the driver manager tool and I strongly suggest if you're installing this on physical hardware, which is not what I'm doing, but if I was installing this on physical hardware, I would need to run this because this is going to install your proprietary drivers that you need. For example, if you have an NVIDIA graphics card, you need the proprietary NVIDIA drivers. If you have a laptop that you're installing this to, most laptops have proprietary Wi-Fi drivers that you need for your Wi-Fi to work properly. So please be sure to run the driver manager. Also be sure to run the update manager. This will update your system, especially if you're installing Linux Mint 22 a few weeks from now, a few months down the road from now, whatever it happens to be, there's going to be some important security updates that you want to run. And then of course you could set up a firewall if you want to do that. I typically don't fool with firewalls. And then you have your software manager where you might need to go ahead and launch that right away to install some important programs that are not installed installed by default on Linux Mint. So let's go ahead and let the software manager here generate a new cache of software so we can see what is available for us. And it took about two or three minutes for the software center to finally generate that cache. So it's the very first time you run it, it's got to sync the repos and, you know, and pull a bunch of stuff down. But now we're able to actually search through some of this stuff. For example, what if I wanted to install 
OBS. You can see I can install OBS and it will actually install the Flatpak version of OBS. You can see I have the option of doing the system package, which I'm assuming of course would be the Debian package from your standard uh, Mint repos, or I could do the Flatpak from Flathub. Now what's interesting about Linux Mint is Linux Mint has integrated flat packs into their distribution by default and they disable snap packages even though ubuntu snaps are an integral part of ubuntu they actually rip all the snap stuff out right but you, uh, you could enable snaps as well on the system uh, you're going to have to jump through some hoops for some reason linux mint doesn't actually want people to install snaps for some reason uh, but they're okay with flat packs which and for me i, I think is kind of silly because I have no problems with snaps or flat packs or app images, any of these containerized package formats. As long as people are able to get the software they want, you know, make it easy for people to get the stuff they want. Now, one thing about the new software center, uh, this version of the software center here in Linux Mint 22, is they only show flat packs that are verified. So this OBS uh, Studio flat pack is a verified flat pack. If it was an unverified flat pack, it actually will not show in the software center. You have to actually uh, go into preferences, I believe, and turn on show unverified flat packs, not recommended. But uh, for me, I would probably turn that on because there are going to be some things that are available as a flat pack that are not quote verified but still if it's uh, if it's only available as a flat pack for example again i don't care where my software comes from you know give me the option to install it if i need to so let me close out the software center and we're still in the welcome tool there is a documentation tab if you want to read a little bit about linux mint and read through some of their documentation if you need that you also have help links here to their web forms as well as their chat room. You can see the chat room is a, uh, a matrix icon. They are now using matrix rather than IRC. And uh, I believe they install element out of the box for a matrix client. If I do a search for element, is it here? No, is it, did I just search for matrix? Matrix, so it's a generic name, but I believe that launches uh, element, but I'm not sure. Connect to matrix, let's see. Let's see what happens here. So it actually opens Mozilla Firefox. You can see element inside Mozilla Firefox. Maybe it's a web app. Yeah, so it's element inside of Firefox. And I'm not going to go ahead and join because I've got nothing uh, really to say here. And I'm not really in need of support, so I don't want to waste the uh, good folks on the Linux Mint teams. I don't want to waste their time. So on the welcome app here, by default, it is ticked to show this dialog at startup. So every time you log in to Linux Mint, this welcome application will always launch until you tick this off. And really, after you run through it the first time, you probably don't need to see it again. So tick that off and you'll never have the welcome application auto start again. Of course, it's always there if you go into the menu system and look for welcome. There is welcome screen. And again, that's just your welcome app. So you could always come back to it if you need it. As far as the look and feel of Linux Mint Cinnamon, it's still the same uh, Cinnamon desktop, still the same look and feel. It really doesn't look like anything has changed in that regard. Let's go through the menu system and see what is installed out of the box here in Linux Mint 22. So let's go into accessories. And it has your standard uh, things like your archive manager for zip and unzip and things like that. Your calculator, character map, uh, GNOME disk. You have your document viewer. Let's see which document viewer they are using. I go to help and about. They're using xreader 4.2.2. I'm not familiar with this particular PDF reader. Also under accessories, we had our file renaming tool. We also have our file manager, which of course is the fantastic Nemo file manager. If I go to help and about, you can see this is Nemo 6.2.6. .6. Nemo is one of the better file managers available on Linux because it has everything you, you want out of a file manager. It hasn't really kind of been gimped the way that the mod Modern GNOME file manager, uh, Nautilus, you know, they've removed a lot of features and, and all of that. But Nemo, if I go into some of the file management preferences here, the settings, you can see you have a lot of things for uh, setting up your uh, view as far as you want an icon view, list view, etc. Behavior, do you want double click, single click, how items are displayed, how columns are listed, what information is listed in the columns. If you do a list view, 
previews uh, as far as pro uh, file previews and folder previews you have your toolbar so what appears you know at the top here you have your context menus of course which are when you right click on a file or a folder you know what actually appears in that Nemo context menu and you have a plugin system uh, so you can turn on and off certain file manager plugins so Nemo again one of the better file managers available on Linux back into the menu system under the graphics category we have our document scanner we have drawing which I'm not sure what that is I'm sure it's probably just a simple paint tool that's what it looks like although I've never actually use this if I go to help and about drawing drawing 1.0.2 a simple image editor for Linux okay uh, and then also under graphics we had Pix. now Pix is the image viewer they use uh, when I launch Pix it crashed the cinnamon desktop environment and I think I've had that bug in past versions I'm, I'm not exactly sure uh, what the deal was but when I tried to launch Pix, it crashed uh, the entire desktop and kicked me back out to the login manager so uh, that is a little bit of a bug now that could be because I'm in a virtual machine it maybe it only affects VMs on physical hardware I'm not sure if that would be a problem or not under the internet category we have Firefox as our default web browser by the way I believe a Firefox and Thunderbird are installed properly as dev packages so they're not uh, snaps obviously because they don't even ship snaps but they're also not flat packs so they're installing the proper Debian package for both Mozilla Firefox and Mozilla Thunderbird let's see what version of Firefox we're on if I go to help and about Firefox uh, we are on 128.0 and you can see uh, the packaging is mint-001-1.0 Mozilla Firefox for Linux Mint. So I guess uh, somebody associated with the Mint team is maintaining this package is what I'm guessing. And also under Internet, we had Thunderbird for our email client. Of course, we had Matrix for connecting to the Matrix support channel for Linux Mint. If you need to get Linux Mint support, Transmission is our BitTorrent client. It's the standard BitTorrent client for the GNOME desktop environment. Transmission is great. It's an excellent program, especially for those of you that download Linux ISOs and you do it via torrent. Transmission's probably the best program we have for downloading things via torrent. Also, we have the Office category where the full LibreOffice suite is installed. If I open LibreOffice Writer, which is the word processor for LibreOffice, let's see what version we're on here. Taking LibreOffice a second to load here. LibreOffice is a very big program, though. I mean, it, so it taking a few seconds to load is not terribly unusual. So let's go help about LibreOffice. This is LibreOffice version 24.2.4.2. And let's close that out. Under sound and video, we have Celluloid, which is our video player. We have Hypnotics, which I believe is that the streaming like TV service. Yeah, this particular application. I believe this has been a part of Linux Mint for a while. I've never actually use that particular program. And then under sound and video, we also have Rhythmbox, which is a excellent audio player although rhythm box crashes in the system as well so uh, that's interesting and again this is a problem I've run into uh, a few times in the past on Linux Mint uh, anytime I install Linux Mint especially the cinnamon edition inside a virtual machine certain applications for whatever reason uh, crash the desktop environment inside a VM also in the menu system we have our preferences category and our administration category and these are just simple system settings and you know, tools such as the terminal emulator for example let's actually open the terminal emulator they are using gnome terminal 3.52.0 the gnome terminal is a pretty good terminal emulator let me zoom in a little bit here so let's go ahead and see what kernel they're using here so let's do a uname space dash r and linux mint 22 is shipping kernel version 6.8.0 also new to this version of linux mint they have now moved to pipewire for their audio server if i do a where is pipewire you can see the pipewire binary is installed you've got user bin pipewire so they're using pipewire and if you want to see how many packages are installed on the system let's do an apt list space dash dash installed if you want the long form of the flag you could also do a single dash i for installed and this will give you a package list so it spits out every package that is installed on its own separate line if I up arrow and 
pipe app list dash i into wc dash l wc is the word count program dash l means give me a line count rather than a word count and you can see there are 1932 lines in this output here from this command that means there's 1932 packages installed on the system now earlier I said that Mozilla Firefox and Mozilla Thunderbird were installed as Debian packages rather than flat packs. So let's actually verify that. Let's do a apt list dash I and then pipe and then grip. And what are we going to grip for? Well, let's grip for Firefox. Let's see if Firefox is actually in the list. And it is. You can see there is the Firefox program. So it is installed via the apt package manager, meaning it's installed as a Debian package. And if you wanted to run the same search for Thunderbird, let's grip for Thunderbird if I can type. And Thunderbird is also installed as a Debian package. When I was looking through the release notes for Linux Mint, some other important uh, additions, they had uh, GTK support, more, more GTK4 support for certain applications. So if you wanted to, uh, for example, grip for GTK4, you can see certain libraries for it or here. They also mentioned libsoup, which is, uh, I believe it's a HTTP uh, application, HTTP client server uh, library for the GNOME desktop environment. And you can see they are actually shipping libsoup 3.0, so on previous versions of Cinnamon, uh, Linux Mint, uh, they were shipping Libsoup version 2, so now they have version 3 on the system. Let's see if they have HTOP installed out of the box. They do not, because I do want to check system resource usage, so let's sudo apt install HTOP. And now that we have HTOP installed, let me run it and see uh, what kind of CPU and RAM usage we have. So the CPU really shouldn't be doing anything because I'm not doing anything on the system that really requires CPU. So uh, right now it's using 4%, uh, 8% of the CPU. That's kind of high uh, considering I really am not doing anything on this right now. Memory usage, it's using 868 megs of the 6 gigs of RAM I gave this VM. I would say that is pretty normal for the Cinnamon desktop. Let me queue to get out of HTOP and let me go ahead and exit out of the terminal. One last thing I want to do is I want to check the wallpapers because, of course, with every edition of Linux Mint, we have new wallpapers. And Linux Mint always ships with some really fantastic wallpapers. So let's go into Change Desktop Background. And by default, you have this Linux Mint category with the same old Linux Mint wallpapers. I mean, these are OK wallpapers, some really nice you know, abstract art with the Linux Mint branding. These are quite nice, but you want to go into Wilma because Wilma is the code name for this version of Linux Mint. So these are the wallpapers that shipped with this version. So some of these are actually very, very nice. So some nature photography, this mountain image, very nice. Let me actually make this smaller if I can. Find the side of this window. And here is one called Snow Mountain. That is a excellent photograph and here is Eclipse. I'm not crazy about that one. Here is Mountain Valley. Now since I have a dark theme, you know, right, dark panel, dark GTK theme, I want a light wallpaper. So this white sands wallpaper actually would work quite nicely for contrast with the dark theme. So I may come back and actually use that as my default. This one here, Body of Water, would also work quite nicely as a contrast. Here is one called Boat, very nice. You know what, I think I'm gonna go back to the White Sands one. Actually, here's another one that's very uh, light in color. It's a snowy image. You know what, I think I like the Sands better though. I think that's the one I'm gonna go with. So there you have it, a very quick and cursory first look at the Linux Mint 22 release. This is of course their flagship Cinnamon Desktop Edition. Linux Mint is always a favorite among Linux users as far as desktop Linux users. They're always a rock solid stable distribution that typically just works. It's very new user friendly. The installation process is very easy. It's very new user friendly in that the Cinnamon Desktop environment, especially if you're coming from say Microsoft Windows, the Cinnamon desktop environment is not 
that different than the way, for example, the desktop environment on Windows behaves. All in all, it looks like it's a solid release, so those of you that are Mint fans, go ahead and check it out. Of course, don't just check out the Cinnamon Edition. They also have, of course, their XFCE Edition as well as their Mate Edition. Now, before I go, I need to thank a few special people. I need to thank the producers of this episode. Matt James, Steve, Warmer Dragon, Darloff, Daedalus, GDR, George Lee, Matthew, Methos, Erjan, Paul, Peace, Arch, and Fedora, Realities for Less, Red Prophet, Roland, Solastri, Tenron, More Gentoo, and Ubuntu, and Willie. These guys, they're my highest tiered patrons over on Patreon. Without these guys, this quick look at Linux Mint 22, codenamed Wilma, would not have been possible. The show is also brought to you by each and every one of these fine ladies and gentlemen. All these names you're seeing on the screen right now, these are all my supporters over on Patreon because I don't have any corporate sponsors. I'm sponsored by you guys. If you like my work and want to see more videos about Linux and free and open source software, subscribe to DistroTube over on Patreon. Peace, guys.